So today, we're going to take a look at one of Disney's many serialized animated adventure comedy series currently airing on Disney Channel, Disney XD and streaming on Disney+. Plus. And even though it might not be my favourite, it's probably the one with the most interesting premise. From its world, to its characters, to its intrinsic mysteries, yesterday we are taking a look at Disney's Amphibia. Hello everybody and welcome to the Science Sub, where today I'm taking a look at Disney's animated fantasy series Amphibia. This show piqued my interest when its second series started airing in early July of this year. With its numerous zoological references, surrounded by fun writing with a mixture of slapstick, dry humour and that typical cartoon snark that's kind of had a resurgence in recent years. Amphibia was created by Thai American animator Matt Braley, who has also worked on some of Disney's other animated successes, including storyboard and directing work on 8 episodes of Gravity Falls, as well as directing, screenwriting and doing the storyboards for Disney's other current animated comedy, Big City Greens. The show focuses on, as you can guess from the title, adventures set in a world full of anthropomorphic amphibians, which can be split into three groups as of season two. Frogs, newt slash salamanders and toads. This world is explored through the lens of seventh grader Anne Boonchoy, as she gets transported to this new world through a mix of a magic music box and peer pressure. It's a classic tale. Once in this strange new world, she gets taken in by a small farming family called the Plantars, made up of Hob Pop, Sprig and a tadpole called Polly. The events of season one focus on some of the day-to-day -day adventures that Anne experiences in this frog out of water scenario, with episodes being more episodic and focused on Anne getting used to this world. With more stereotypical sitcom plots, such as best friends sharing a room for the first time and getting on each other's nerves, Anne helping out a local restaurant to make better food, and an episode which focuses on building up the relationship between Anne and the three plantars. Season 2 on the other hand, focuses on the planters and Anne going on a road trip to the city of Newtopia to find out how Anne can return home, and all of the zany events that happen on their journey. As such, the episodes from the first half of this season involve more road trip focused stories, such as stopping by a roadside hotel with a dark secret, whilst the second half of the season focuses more on exploring Newtopia, and the events of a big city, and the contrast that has to the small town of Wartwood from season 1. And now that season 2 is almost over, with season 3 somewhere on the horizon, there can be no better time to take a look at this show and analyse it to see what kind of amphibian accuracies can be found between its mix of slapstick and dry humour. But before we talk about any of the in-depth details found in the show, let's just clarify what makes something an amphibian. The name amphibian is given to all living tetrapods, uh, four-legged vertebrates, who are ectotherms, which means that they are cold-blooded, similar to other organisms from the phylum Chordata, which includes all fish, reptiles, birds and mammals. There are three main classifications of amphibian. These are frogs and toads, salamanders and newts, and finally Sicilians, the least common type of amphibian which are limbless serpents. Most of these are shown in amphibia, though very little difference is illustrated between the salamanders and the newts, with both having similar features and structures, though in reality salamanders can be separated from newts by their longer tails, more moist skin and a lack of any external gills, due to salamanders living both on land and in water, whereas newts spend all of their time in water. These amphibians are often confused for reptiles, but differentiate themselves in many ways, a majority of which are based around living half of their life on land and half of it in water. As well as these, amphibians also have webbed feet which allow them to swim and jump efficiently. Besides these environment based adaptations, amphibians also have some adaptations which help them to defend themselves against predators, including the secretions of toxins from their skin, which in some cases can be poisonous or hallucinogenic, such as dart frogs as seen in season 2's Wax Museum, which in itself is a reference to Gravity Falls. Ok, so now we know what amphibians are, Let's focus on one of our factions. Let's take a look at the frogs, looking at Season 1, Episode 6A, Sprig vs Hot Pop. Now, the plot of this episode is nothing special. It's a typical kid thinks they know better than their parents story, which features Sprig challenging Hot Pop for control of the farm, so that he can implement some new ideas on how to run it. At the end, Sprig gets in over his head and Hot Pop takes back control of the farm, 
Having learnt a lesson about taking new ideas into account, everyone laughs happy endings all around. The competition in this episode shows a sumo-like showdown whereby the plantars are attempting to push each other off of a lily pad and whoever stays on is the new leader of the farm. With real frogs, the fights for dominance are usually used to attract potential mates rather than creating a general social order and can be seen in African bullfrogs, which normally battle to get the centre of breeding areas for the best chance of reproduction. But that's not the only frog-related accuracy seen in the show. When it comes to the frogs of Amphibia, we see many small references to their diet in the form of insects, and that's seen in many, many, many episodes, as well as both insects and plants being aggressive towards frogs, which could be a reference to certain species of dragonfly larvae, which have in the past managed to eat full populations of tadpoles. But something else seen throughout the series is the use of snails as the main method of transport across Amphibia. This could be a tongue-in-cheek reference to the possible phoretic relationship between frogs and snails. A phoretic relationship is a non-permanent commensalistic interaction whereby one organism attaches themselves to another purely for the purpose of travel, with small snails attaching themselves to frogs for that very purpose. This was observed with European tree frogs with multiple small snails attached to various parts of their bodies. Just one of many cute little biological references in the show. Okay, so enough about frogs, let's have a look at newts. So in season 2, we see the plantars reach Newtopia, and as such, we get a look at newt culture and some references to newt biology. One example is in season 2, episode 8A, Lost in Newtopia, which features Anne and Polly exploring the city. Along the way, they find a shop which sells fake tales for newts to use who lose their own. These are, of course, rented, as newts can regrow their limbs by use of stem-like cells which are totipotent. This means these cells can replicate and can turn into cells for muscle, blood vessels and nerve tissues. This process will normally take a while dependent on the species. For example, in juvenile axolotls the process takes approximately 40 to 50 days, but hey, it's still better than missing a limb. Our final stop on our tour for amphibia will focus on the biological relationships that the three factions frogs, toads and newts have in the real world. And from that, we may even be able to theorise as to where the trajectory of the series will be in the upcoming third season. So first of all, let's take a look at the biological relationships between frogs and toads, the main villains of the first season. Many species of toad will often eat smaller toads and even frogs and newts if able to, which is shown in Amphibia by the toads being the more warrior-like faction. Exemplified by the only toads in the series so far being the Toad Army, which then attempts to murder Hop Pop for setting up a tax strike. Newts, on the other hand, will tend to have a boom burst relationship with frogs. Whilst newts don't eat frogs specifically, they do eat tadpoles and frog spawn. As a result, in environments where both frogs and newts exist, the species go through periods of transition between high numbers of newts and fewer frogs and periods of more frogs as newts become able to eat due to the lack of tadpoles. And then we have the frogs, the bottom of this three species food chain. They'll eat many insects, slugs, snails and worms, which exhibited through the series by the plantars being somewhat of perpetual underdogs. But what could this mean for the upcoming third season? Well, given that we've already seen signs of the newt leader having their own agenda regarding Anne, Marcy and Sasha, Season 3 will most likely show a complete 180 for the King of Newtopia, leading to some kind of battle of the five armies with toads and frogs together. There is technically one group of amphibians which haven't been featured in the show as of yet, and that is Sicilians. Though, if I'm completely honest, I don't expect there to be any Sicilians in the show. Or at least, not as a separate civilization as the frogs, newts and salamanders and toads. This is owing to them being rare in nature, and their lack of limbs, which may lead them to being too different from the main cast of the show to be added in organically. So there we go. There's some basic knowledge of amphibians, and a look into what amphibia might delve into going into season 3. Honestly, I was incredibly surprised by just how many biological references there were to real world amphibians in the show. With their hierarchy, physical abilities, and multiple references to their predators and diets. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you have any particular scientific subject or topic that you'd like to see me cover in the future, 
then please tell me in the comments down below. And if you want to support the channel even further, you could also contribute to my Patreon. As a patron, you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all aspects of the science of videos, including script writing, editing, thumbnail design, and all assets that I make for the show, as well as being able to vote on what the next science of video will be. But until then, this has been the science of Disney's Amphibia. I'll see you next time.